Hello everybody, this is part 5 of um, the Oral Roster Rent series entitled Communication. Um, last time um, I was talking to, talk to you once again about um, uh, the different obstacles that, that we face uh, you know, in communicating and stuff. Um, and the last thing I was on telling you about uh, was having a passive aggressive, um, being you know, passive aggressive, you know what I'm saying, instead of you know, um, you know, you you doing the indirect thing instead of uh, being you know being direct and how the way you feel and stuff. And I was giving you examples of that. I was telling you that, you know, these examples include, you know, um, you know, includes uh, you know, nagging or your know, nitpicking, being a procrastinator, um, and you know, just being negative and stuff too. Then I, then I went further down and I started explaining to you about, you know, another key thing which is sabotaging. You know what I'm saying? And I was going into details about sabotages, uh how how the way you sabotage, you know what I'm saying, what you do, you try to um under well what you do, you try to spoil on uh, a certain, you know, event or activity or whatever it is that a person that desires to that want to do and stuff because you have a certain unresolved issue and stuff. And I gave you an example about, you know, one now saying that the one uh, many women are very notorious for one uh, sabotaging different things because you know they have unresolved issues in the relationship. Uh unresolved issues that they want to communicate about uh, but they don't know how to you know fully express it. And so so what they do they'll sabotage certain key events and stuff. And the example I gave us that you know a, a woman, you know, say a man will want to go out uh, and hang out with their friends, and you know, a woman will sabotage it by the, in other words, by try to make the man feel guilty about going and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Make him feel, you know, what I'm saying he's guilty for going out with the friends and stuff like that. And instead of dealing with the the real issue at hand, whatever the issue that it is that you need to communicate about at hand and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, uh, I want to talk about also about you know this this thing about displacement as well. We're not talking about displacement. I'm talking about um, this involve you know directing anger at things that 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 um, that people um, directing anger at things that um, people um, cherishes that they love and stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's what displacement is. Displacement also goes hand in hand with sabotage and stuff. But displacement is a more 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 darker version of the sabotage and stuff. Displacement, it could go into so many different areas and stuff. It could go to on so many different ways and stuff as well. Now, one of the most common um, displacements that, that uh, I could give you an example of is the one, uh, it's the fact of, you know, the issue with the one, um, uh, the the, uh, the issue with the, the baby mama versus the, the baby daddy issue and stuff, okay? Now, the reason why I'm gonna mention this is because this is also very, very, very common and stuff too. Now, um, when when uh, when when the um, when the baby mom and baby father when they separate or whatever, or they have a child born out of wedlock, or uh, it was an unplanned pregnancy, and you know the the woman decided to keep the child, the um, the dude didn't want to keep the child. They end up being considered as a deadbeat dad because they not take care of the child, you know, and stuff like that. Then the woman resents the the um, the um the man for not stepping up to his responsibility because he was a part of the procreation process and stuff as well as her. You know what I'm saying? So the woman she's feeling all these different uh, things. She's feeling uh guilty, she's feeling ashamed, she's feeling all these different things which leave her to the point of feeling displaced or displacement. And when you feel displacement, what you do, just like I said, you direct your anger into other things. And this other thing that I'm gonna mention about that I feel that I need to mention about this because it happens very common is that you direct your anger towards the child that you gave birth to. How do you do that? You end up looking at this child as or you know as you know the, the person as a man who um went and left you or whatever and he's not doing what he's supposed to be doing, he's not being responsible. It's even cases where the man is actually being responsible. He's being a responsible father. He's doing his very best to take care of his children. But you have displacement because you have unresolved issues with him. So therefore, you end up taking the, the this displacement or the unresolved the yeah the displacement and you focus it on the child. So you put the child into the uh into the middle of the battlefield and shoot them bullet bullets at the child. In other words, you you might say some things like. You you may say some things like to a child like child like you remind me of your daddy. Your daddy always do this to me. Or you could be the other way around. You remind me of your mama. Your mama 
do do this. You know what I'm saying? Oh, your mama do that. Look how your mom, look how you look. Your mama do the same thing. Look how you look. Your daddy do the same thing and stuff. You know what I'm saying? There's different stuff. Or you might say some people they go even worse than that and say, um, shoot, you know your daddy is a crackhead. You know you ain't gonna amount to nothing. You gonna be a crackhead too and stuff. Or you might say something to your mom. Your mom is a hoe, so you gonna be a hoe as well. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. That's called displacement and stuff. You know what I'm saying? You you focus on the anger on something that a other person church. Now it can not not only could deal with just a human person, but could deal with it with an inalienable object. And so it could be deal with an object of affection. Like earlier, I was telling you about the one the, the husband who decided that he wants to spill his retirement fund on the boat. And stuff, you know what I'm saying? And the wife disagreed with it. And stuff. So what she'll do, she'll um feel she'll she'll have anger for the boat. So in other words, she'll find reasons to try to purposely sabotage the boat. And stuff, you know what I'm saying? She'll, you know, I don't know, she'll do something stupid. Like he'll he'll tell her, hey, honey, draw the boat. She'll run the boat into another boat or whatever. Oops, my bad. Well, I guess you shouldn't have bought that boat. You know, just stuff like that. Or, oops, my bad, maybe you shouldn't have bought that car. Or, oops, my bad, um, maybe you shouldn't have bought that video game or whatever. You know what I'm saying? That's called displacement and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And so, so you have to want to look, look out for that. Now, the, the last part... Um, about um, um, the obstacle that, that, that prevents effective communication I want to uh, talk to you about is, uh, is the devitalizing marriages and stuff. Now, when, when I say devitalizing marriages, I mean that, that uh, this, this involves, um, this, this in other words, um, is, is referred to as uh, emotional divorce. Okay? All right. When I'm talking about emotional divorce, I'm talking about is that um, you mentally in your mind, both person, the one, um, the husband, the wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, you mentally in your mind separated yourself from each other, but you physically is still there with each other and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, in other words, like it'd be a situation where you just, you got to a point where enough is enough, you know what I'm saying? And you just emotionally ain't attached to the person no more. No more. You're not, and the telltale signs of this is that um, uh, you you notice that either the husband or the wife, uh, you know, what I'm saying they probably won't be sleeping in the same beds together no more. They probably even find another place. You know, what I'm saying they probably have another place to go to and stuff. You know, or uh, if you're dealing with even even a cheating relationship, they'll have a they'll be going to the the person who they uh, either commit adultery or whatever. They'll be at, at their house instead. It's that they don't be there. It's be a, a total separation. And stuff, you know what I'm saying? Where they won't be there at all. And stuff, you know what I'm saying? But they come and come back together, living in the same dwelling. They're still in the same place. They're not talking to each other. They're not, you know, having sex with one another. You know what I'm saying? They ain't doing nothing. They're not communicating. They ain't doing nothing. They're not spending time with each other. Nothing like that. That's called an uh, emotional divorce, in other words. So a devitalizing de marriage, in other words, and stuff. So all these, all these, um, all these sort of things that I was expressed to you about, about the uh, obstacles of, uh, you know, um, they'll, they'll hinder effective communication. I want y'all to take heed to every last one of these things that I'm talking, to, talking about and take heed to it and stuff, you know what I'm saying? So, then the song, take heed to it and stuff, you know what I'm saying? So, um, within, uh, I want to go more, a little bit more deeper into this, um, emotional divorce thing, um. Now, there's another thing that's 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 uh, within this is called like a, a it's um, in uh, psychology we call it fight invaded and stuff. You know what I'm saying? What it is is that uh, it's a reaction to to the one uh, partner's attempt to raise a dispute or tension, uh, producing um, issues by refusing to engage with the with the one um, with the one uh, partner's uh, initiatives. In other words, in other in other words, um. Let, let's say, say for this for example, um, one, one, uh, one, one person they they want to rec reconcile whatever that's going on, and they 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 feeling that what they did is wrong, and they're trying to work on it and stuff, right? But the other person, instead of they doing it, they try to evade it as much as possible. And the reason why they evade it as much as possible is because they want you to feel how the way they feel. And stuff, you know what I'm saying? They, they want you to want, um, in other words, they still deal with this uh, displacement, sabotage, and all this stuff there. All because they want you to feel how the way they feel. And it deals all the way back to what I was talking about in the last um, 
part of this rent. Last couple parts of these rents, I'll tell you about them um, being selfish and having pride and stuff. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to release the pride or nothing like that and stuff or release it. They want to be selfish and stuff as well. And so they evade it. You know what I'm saying? They are their vague being, you know, they're very engaging into, you know, actually trying to deal with the problem. And so they don't want to deal, they don't want to deal with it because they feel like you're not going to listen to them or they feel like that they're right and stuff, you know what I'm saying? So that's what they do. Um, now, uh, the common part that I want y'all to realize about, about this when I'm telling you about this um, emotional divorce and stuff like that is that it's going to be um, a pattern that you need to realize. It's going to be a, re a repeated cycle of verbal expressions by 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 um by a wife and the withdrawal by the husband and this is very very common is that it all it always ends ends this way is that it's gonna be always gonna be a repeated um negative verbal expression by the wife and the 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 uh, the husband or the man is gonna you know feel withdrawal because the the uh the reason why the husband feel withdrawal is that you know what I'm saying in most cases that uh, they know that if they get upset and stuff like that, then it can lead to a, a, a more physical altercation, in other words, and stuff. And most men, most good men, they don't want to get into no physical altercation with a woman whatsoever and stuff like that because they've been taught in childhood that, you know what I'm saying, a woman is precious, that a woman is, um, she, she, you know, she's a jewel, that you treat her respect, uh, that she's fragile and all this stuff. So most good men would not want to get into a physical altercation. So what they do, they instantly withdraw themselves from the conflict altogether. So versus the woman being more in conflict, you know, she's more uh, verbally attacking and stuff like that and stuff. Now, also, it could go the other way around stuff too. The husband would be the same way around or the boyfriend would be the same way around. And so what he's attacking and so with verbal stuff and the, the wife withdraws, you know what I'm saying? It could be the same way around. So, so, so you need to... um. Just kind of pay attention to that as well and stuff. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so, uh, for right now, uh, my, my time is up. On this particular um, episode of this um, rant, uh, we're going to go further into um, into our communications. And I'm going to actually talk to you about how can you communicate very well in more detail. Till then, fight faith with faith. God bless.